It's easy to be thankful or to show gratitude and appreciation when things are going well, going great in order and as expected. It would be out of character and abnormal for a person not to be grateful when times are good, everything and everyone is well, it's easier to be grateful. But it takes a caliber of people to maintain that attitude in difficult times. When things are not working as they should, it's difficult for the ordinary man or woman to be grateful. It's difficult for most people in challenging times to look for the silver lining in the dark sky. As human beings, we are generally uh, uh, don't handle difficult times easily. Upon reflection, it takes a thinking person to stop in these busy times, regardless of the present condition, to give thanks for what the Lord has done or doing. Sometimes, in the heat of the moment, in the face of difficulties, we can be overwhelmed and overcome by the challenges uh, before us. This uh, was the case with a young preacher many years ago during the American Civil War. In a certain overcrowded prison, men were dying daily. One of the new prisoners was a young preacher. As he saw the conditions surrounding him, he sobbed uncontrollably. Suddenly, from a window, he heard, Praise God, from whom all blessings flow. More and more men began to join in, and the preacher that day was able to take courage and hope in a simple song called the Doxology. Thomas Ken, the composer, had been championed to the King Charles of England. He pleaded with the King many times to turn to Christ. The outcome is unknown, but Ken was faithful and gave a witness of, uh, for Christ. The words to the doxology are as follows. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above, ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. This hymn reminds me so much of my secondary school days. It was a Friday closing hymn song. It means so much to me now than ever before. You see, God is the source of all good things. I know we are so sophisticated now, so enlightened. But you see, truly, all blessings flow to us from God. For all creatures, small and great, God is the source, sustainer, supplier, and provider of all good things. Your perception, insight, and understanding about life determines your action or in action. Yes, you may have a business, a good job, a, a career, but I want you to know these are the avenues God uses to meet our needs. Ultimately, you need to see God as your provider. God does not print currencies, pounds, sterling, or dollars. When you have a need, He gives inspiration, creative ideas, concepts of which if you process, will result in finances. One of God's many covenant names is Jehovah Jireh, which means to see or to provide. In other words, to see God or to experience God as your provider. Apostle James testified in the Bible in James 1.17, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. God does not have double standard. What he does for one, he will do for another. But without faith, it's impossible to please God. For whoever comes to him must believe that he is, and that he is the rewarder of those that diligently seek him. King Solomon, the wisest man who ever lived outside Christ, concluded in his words in Proverbs 10, 22, The blessing of the Lord makes one rich but he has no sorrow with it. Whatever God gives, gives life. It will not stress you out. You, you may have acquired things, stuff, positions, etc. 
that is stressing you out, status, status quo, you have to keep up with. These are these from the Lord. The reputation you have to live up to, people's expectations they didn't express to you in person, but you imagine in your mind, so you have to defend it by all means necessary. First Timothy 6 tells us, but godliness with contentment is great gain. Godliness with contentment are power twins for successful godly living. Proverbs 10 22, the blessing of the Lord maketh one rich and he has no sorrow with it. Don't let nothing or anyone stress you out this week. If you are stressed, you've probably moved away from God's perfect will for your life. Well, before I go, I'd like you to join me in prayer. Lord, I pray, help us this week to realize that all good things come from you. Help us to see you as our ultimate provider in spite of whatever it is we may do for a living. Help us this week to focus our gaze, our aspirations and expectation on you and you alone. Help us not to be distracted by the voices around us. Father, we thank you because you want the best for us. Help us to trust you to meet our every need in spite of any prevailing negative condition in Jesus' name. Well, until next time, may the good Lord bless you and keep you in Jesus' name. Have a wonderful week.